Hey everybody, we rope dropped Animal Kingdom this morning and spent an entire day in the park. We tried some new treats, saw so many animals, and learned lots of tips to share with you, so stick around to see what we get into. Crowds were pretty heavy for a Sunday at Rope Drop, so we decided to stop off and say hi to the lemurs first. There's one, there is one, two, three, four already. Oh, two, three. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. The lemurs are absolutely adorable, and I highly suggest swinging by to spot these playful primates. Whoa. After we saw the macaws fly over the Tree of Life, we decided to head towards Everest, but we got stopped by the cutest couple eating their breakfast. The wait time for Everest jumped up, so we pivoted and decided to rope drop my personal favorite thing at any Disney park, food. This bowl was huge, it was delicious, even my picky eaters loved it, and we would definitely get it again. Up next, it was time for the Maharaja Jungle Trek, which is my favorite, and up first, we said hi to Tia, the Komodo Dragon. Next on the trail are the lion-tailed macaques, which we absolutely adore seeing because they're three sisters, just like our little girls. Up next, we headed into the bat exhibit, which honestly is a hidden gem. Seriously, you guys, you have the option of walking right past this one, but don't. There's so much to see in here. There's so many cute little animals to learn about, and there's even a wilderness explorer's badge in here. It's the first one on the trail, so be sure to stop and get it and ask the wilderness explorer as many questions as you can about the bats because they are full of knowledge. A lot of people think Animal Kingdom is just a half day park, but I couldn't disagree more. Every single time you come, you're going to see a different animal, you're going to learn something new, and there's going to be different activities going on. So be sure to check with your cast members and take full advantage of their knowledge because that truly can make the difference in your Animal Kingdom day. One of our very favorite things to do while we're at any Disney park is to hunt for hidden Mickeys. The tiger exhibit on the trek is filled with these beautiful murals that are packed full of tons of hidden Mickeys. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled if you like finding hidden Mickeys as well. Tigers are my number one favorite animals, so it's no surprise this is my favorite exhibit in Animal Kingdom. This is Conrad, he's a Sumatran tiger, and these tigers are critically endangered with only 400 left on Earth. So Animal Kingdom is trying to get Conrad and Anala together to have some tiger babies. Hopefully we'll see them soon. The final exhibit on this trek is the Asian bird exhibit and it is super cool because they have bird watching cards that can teach you about the different types of birds you're seeing up close and personal in this exhibit and you can also earn a wilderness explorers badge here so be sure to stop and get that. Once we finished the first trek, we decided to head over to Africa for the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. We did stop by the Tree of Life for a few magic shots and got to see my favorite group, the Discovery Island Drummers. Like, seriously, you guys, they're my favorite. Like, 
frame shop at Disney, right? Anyone? No? Just me? Okay, back to the Gorilla Falls Trail. This trail starts out with the black and white colobus monkeys and they are super fun to watch. One thing that I do wanna mention is early in the morning is a great time to visit Animal Kingdom because all of the animals are gonna have their breakfast. So they're very active and it's super fun to see the things that they eat. I didn't get a great video of the naked mole rats, but be sure to check them out because they're some of the cutest animals here at Animal Kingdom. Also be sure to pull out these drawers because there's all kinds of things you can see in them and not many people know that they actually open. Up next on this trail is the African bird exhibit. However, we love the cichlid tanks and could spend hours and hours just looking at these beautiful fish. They're everywhere in the tank and if you keep your eyes peeled, you can also find some hidden Mickeys here as well. Look, babies. Also the spies. Five inside mother's half are protected. And then chocolates are a part of the group known as mouth breeders. The female lays her egg on the floor of the river, then mixes them up with their mouth. After the male egg fertilizes the eggs, they develop and hatch in the mother's The young fire live in there in safety until they are too large. How cool is that? The finale of this trail are, of course, the Western Lowland Gorillas, and they are a marvel to behold. Something to keep in mind, though, is that these trails do not open until 30 minutes until after the park is open. So do like we did and grab some breakfast. You can bring food on the trails. They also do close an hour before the park closes, so keep this in mind when making your schedule. Your gorilla? After checking out all of these amazing animals, we worked up quite the appetite, so we decided we needed a sweet treat. So we headed over to Zuri's Sweet Shop in Africa. I really enjoyed this slushy. It wasn't too sweet and it was quite refreshing. You can also get it with alcohol. We got a cupcake for Daisy and it was a typical Disney cupcake, but I mean, kids love those, right? We tried this chocolate chip cookie, which was really delicious. The almonds made it extra crunchy. And Darcy got this cute little pumpkin full of candy corn treats that she loved. It was just the pick-me-up that we all needed. <laughs> we checked out some merch super quick. Then we hopped on a train to Rafiki's Planet Watch where the conservation station is. This is one of our absolute favorite things to do at Animal Kingdom. There's just so much to do and see out here, like the veterinarian treatment room, nutrition center, amphibian windows, science center, affection section, and the animation experience. I highly recommend checking this area out, but be sure to come early because the last train does depart at 4.30 p.m. daily. This is the affection section where you're able to pet and brush a variety of adorable animals. In fact, this is the only petting zoo you will find at the Walt Disney World Resort. Up next, we headed inside the conservation station to check out the animation experience where you can discover the influence of real life animals as you create your own sketch of a beloved Disney character. Sadly, we had already drawn Maleficent in the past, so we decided to explore the conservation station some more and to get some more Wilderness Explorer badges while we were at it. There are actually four badges to get out at the conservation station. One includes a really fun scavenger hunt, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled for these. Once we returned from Rafiki's Planet Watch, we all were ready to blow off a little steam. So I headed to the Thirsty River Bar and grabbed my number one favorite cocktail at Animal Kingdom, which is the Avalanche Blue Margarita. 
I highly, highly recommend this one, you guys. It is my all-time favorite. After that, we headed to the girl's very favorite place in all of Animal Kingdom, the Boneyard. This is essentially a giant playground with lots of slides and areas to explore. And this is also where you can find the dig site where young explorers can excavate fossils and parents can enjoy shaded seating and large fans to help cool things down. The greatest part about the dig site is it's not actually sand, it's tiny rocks, so it doesn't stick to your kids and it falls off pretty easily when you're ready to go. After the girls were done playing, Daisy asked if we could ride Triceratop Spin, which is essentially just Dumbo, but dinosaur version. However, we are excited to ride it anytime we can because of the rumored closure of Dino Land. Our favorite part about this ride is we can ride it all together as a family of five, even with little ones. The sweet snacks we had earlier tidied us over for a while, but we were all starting to get really hungry, so we headed somewhere we'd never been before for lunch or dinner. Or liner? I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. So we headed over to Beat Safari, and wow, I was so blown away by how beautiful this place was, you guys. However, we've been to Animal Kingdom at least 50 times and there's a reason we've never tried Pizza Fari and that's because it doesn't get the best reviews. Now, we didn't think it was that bad. I'd probably give everything we tried about a six out of 10, but I do think there are some better places to eat at Animal Kingdom for sure. However, I do have to point out that the kids meals are just $7.50. They come with three things and a drink and the girls all love the cheese pizzas, so this is a great option for kids. After dinner, we decided to go check out the Otter Grotto, which is supported by Otterbox. Like, how cute is that, you guys? <laughs> After we were done checking out the otters, we decided to head over to Everest because it was just a 25 minute posted wait. But along the way, we decided to stop and admire the Siamang gibbons, which we overheard someone say, are those real monkeys? Because it is kind of wild just seeing these habitats out in the open. And I can definitely tell you they are real, but they're not monkeys, they're apes. While Darcy and I waited on Everest, Brett took Dagny and Daisy over to the Finding Nemo, the Big Blue and Beyond show. And if you have not checked the show out, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing so. It's one of the best shows at Walt Disney World, in my opinion. Everest is such a fun, amazing coaster, so let's just take a minute to take in and appreciate all of the Everest vibes.
The Everest wait time ended up taking a little bit longer than we were expecting, so we didn't make it over to the Nemo show with Brett and the girls. However, that left us with a little extra time, so Darcy chose to ride Dinosaur. And with all of the rumors of Dino Land closing soon, we decided to take every opportunity we can to immerse ourselves in this land before it's gone. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller, and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. Go ahead. After the ride, we met back up with Brett and the girls and checked out some merch at the dinosaur gift shop. After that, we walked over to Chester and Hester's dinosaur treasures and you guys, I will be so sad if they take this away when they redo Dinoland. It is the cutest gift shop. The details in here are incredible. It's supposed to be decorated by some of the Dino Institute interns and oh my gosh it's just so cool definitely go check this gift shop out if you are lucky enough to visit before dino land is closed it was a school night but we did have time for one final ride and on our way to that ride we stopped and said hi to the cotton top tamarins they just had rare twins and I just thought this moment was so funny because the kids were fighting and the mom and dad were like, if I just look away, they'll stop, right? And I just completely related to them in that moment. So our final stop of the day was to go on the safari. Oh, we lost Darcy there for a minute, but she woke right back up as soon as we got on the ride. We really love doing the safaris later in the afternoon when the wait times have dropped and the animals get fed right before park close. So the animals are very active at this time, which makes the safari even more fun. You can see up to 34 incredible species of animals on this amazing experience. But what makes it even more special, in my opinion, is knowing that Walt Disney's original vision for the Jungle Cruise was to have live animals on the ride. Obviously, for liability purposes back then, when they were just opening Disneyland, that was just not a possibility. So knowing that Kilimanjaro Safari is Walt's original vision for Jungle Cruise come to life just makes it even more exciting and special.
All right, guys, that is going to do it for our very first full YouTube video. Thanks for joining us at Animal Kingdom today. I hope you learned something new about this beautiful park and had fun with us. Be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I post a new adventure. And go follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. This is Haley, aka The Enchanted Esquire, signing off. Thanks for watching and stay magical.